the Starship, SpaceX's in-development rocket designed to send the first humans to Mars, is getting bigger and bolder than ever before. SpaceX's CEO Elon Musk told his 148 million Twitter followers Sunday that the stainless steel rocket can produce up to 9,000 tons of force at sea level. Looks like we can increase Raptor thrust by around 20% to reach 9,000 tons, or around 20 million pounds of force at sea level, Musk tweeted. To consider at this time, with all 33 Raptors at full throttle, Starship can produce almost 7,600 tons or 16.7 million pounds of thrust at liftoff. This even beats the previous record holder, the Soviet N-1 rocket, by nearly 60%. To even imagine this new power, wow, how cool. In fact, this monster can reach this power when it's fitted with 42 Raptor engines, 33 Raptor engines on Super Heavy, and 9 engines on Starship. But of course, this won't stop at increasing the number of engines. Adding another 3 Raptor engines to Starship, boosting the count from 6 to 9, will require stretching its tanks. According to amateur modelers, who are generally able to estimate rocket performance with enough information about its structures, shape, and engines, an optimal 9-engine Starship's tanks would be stretched about 25% to store an additional 300 tons of cryogenic liquid oxygen and methane. That upgraded Starship would have a liftoff mass close to 1,600 tons or 3.5 million pounds, and stand about 55 meters tall, 10% taller than current ships. Regardless of its thrust, dimensions, or weight, what matters most is how a stretched 9-engine Starship would impact that overall rocket's launch performance. Musk went on to add and deliver over 200 tons of payload to a useful orbit with full and rapid reusability. 50 rockets flying every three days on average enables an over days on average enables over a megaton of payload to orbit per year, enough to build a self-sustaining city on Mars, he said. Well, managing an average of 50 rocket launches every three days is an enormous undertaking. When we break it down, it amounts to approximately 6,100 launches per year. To support this frequency, around 25 million tons of liquid oxygen and approximately 6 million tons, which is equivalent to roughly 8.7 million cubic meters of liquid methane, would be required. To put it into perspective, the combined consumption of liquid nitrogen, liquid oxygen, and liquid methane would necessitate approximately 8,000 tanker trucks each day. This logistical nightmare is a challenge. But if those estimates about payload are accurate, upgrading Starship with 9 Raptors and stretching its tanks is a no-brainer. It might slow development and make all 9 engine ships cost a substantial fraction more, but a 50% improvement in payload performance would significantly improve the efficiency of Starship's more ambitious Moon and Mars launch profiles, which require require numerous orbital refueling. In effect, a payload increase would allow SpaceX to complete most refueling tasks more efficiently, quickly, and cheaply, even if the upgrade plans mean that all Starships will be stretched and carry nine Raptors fully refueling the new Starship variant and LEO could require seven tanker launches instead of eight to ten. If SpaceX doesn't mind maintaining multiple distinct Starship variants, which appears to be the case, then ships that are exclusively dependent on refueling, namely the Moon and Mars landers, in particular, could stay at their current size, with around 1,200 tons of propellant storage and six Raptors. A fleet of upgraded starships could thus refuel their smaller siblings with just five to six tanker launches. However, there is a good chance that the extra mass required to stretch Starship around five and a half meters is minor enough that SpaceX will instead stretch all Starship variants. In fact, for variants like NASA's HLS Moon lander and future Mars-bound starships, which depend entirely on refueling to reach their destinations, stretched tanks and more propellant storage could increase the amount of payload they could send to the Moon, Mars, and other high-energy destinations by quite a bit. Ultimately, it will be fascinating to hear more details about SpaceX and Musk on how exactly the upgraded starship design might benefit those operations in the coming weeks and months. With the increasingly strong development of SpaceX, NASA is urging Boeing and Northrop Grumman to commercialize the space launch system. Consider this. On the surface, it's a good strategy. The SLS is horrendously expensive to process and launch. If the Monster Rocket's two main contractors can find other customers, the launch cost will decline. Cost-cutting is an important consideration thanks to the pressure on NASA's budget because of the debt
debt ceiling deal. The planned House Appropriations Committee of 2024 spending levels could be devastating to the space agency. Currently, the space launch system costs about $2 billion to launch. The goal is to bring the costs down to $1 billion per launch. But who would want to spend a billion dollars to launch anything on NASA's monster rocket except for the space agency? The Space Force certainly doesn't want anything to do with the space launch system. Colonel Douglas Pentecost, a senior rocket acquisition official with the Space Force, is quoted as saying, It's a capability right now that we have the DoD don't need. We have the capability that we need at the affordability price that we have, so we're not that interested in some partnership with NASA on the SLS system. It's not going to get any better in the future. The military and commercial customers have the Falcon 9, the Falcon Heavy, and soon the Vulcan to launch payloads. Eventually, the SpaceX Starship and the Blue Origin New Glenn will be able to toss heavy payloads into space at a fraction of the Space Launch System's cost. The problem with the Space Launch System lies in its origins. Because President Barack Obama's cancellation of the Constellation program angered Congress on both sides of the aisle, NASA was obliged to enter into a Faustian bargain. NASA agreed to build a heavy lift rocket in exchange for the commercial crew program. Thus was born the Space Launch system, whose purpose was as much to provide jobs to constituents and fat contracts to campaign contributors as it was to launch things into space. NASA and Congress, which funds it and its programs, are faced with two painful options. The first option is for Congress to swallow hard and fund the space launch system. After all, Congress imposed the SLS on NASA. Congress continued to insist that the heavy lift rocket be a part of the Artemis Return to the Moon program, expense be damned. The legislative body would be hypocritical to suddenly discover that the SLS is a money pit just at the moment when it is inclined to cut the federal budget. The second option would be to find some alternative to the space launch system to take astronauts to lunar orbit. The idea of using the SpaceX Starship to not only land on the moon but to take astronauts from the Earth to the moon has been discussed elsewhere. The beauty of the option is that it would drop the cost of a human lunar exploration campaign by orders of magnitude. Lunar expeditions will also likely occur more frequently than once a year or once every two years. Elon Musk has predicted that Starship may cost as little as $10 million a flight and will launch hundreds of times before it even carries people. Several obstacles exist to switch from the space launch system to the Starship. For one thing, the SLS that will be used for Artemis 2 is already under construction. Some of the engines for the Artemis 3 mission, the first moon landing in over 50 years have been delivered. Even if NASA retires the SLS, it will still be the center of the first few missions to the moon. NASA is paying for unwise decisions made over a decade ago. If the space agency means to decrease the cost of returning to the moon, it has few, if any, good options. The space agency needs to act sooner rather than later. Well, folks, that wraps up our show for today. We hope you enjoyed learning more about the precarious predicament that NASA is going through. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.